So, uh, Marshall, you want to hear it? That's good. This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles. We are on a 10,000 year odyssey. Cannabis is nothing new. So tell me, muse, of that plant of many resources which wandered far and wide the ancient plant of food, fuel, and fiber cultivated for millennia. Historically, it was used, the raw plant was used for food more than 34 million years ago. And so now here we are today trying to figure out what to do, what not to do. It's an, an unbelievable state that we're in, state of affairs. And thus our odyssey begins with where we are today. As we venture through this past 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant which cannabis derives, the many uses of the plant, hemp, cannabis, ashes, cannabis in religion, cannabis in medicine, cannabis and Uncle Sam. Oh dear. <laughs> so, as you know, mm -hmm. The cannabis industry in Hawaii is growing by leaps and bounds. In 2015, the dispensary program licensed eight uh, dispensaries. Yes. And they are doing great. And now I understand that the state of Hawaii issues may about uh, 1,200 license uh, cards mm -hmm. a month. Yes. And so here we are with all of these people mm -hmm. with license to go to the dispensary and buy medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. They are allowed to grow plants, medical mm -hmm. cannabis. So now we have, and then we're also licensed in the state of Hawaii mm -hmm. to buy a gun. Mm -hmm. So now today here we are bumping heads with the two, mm -hmm. medical cannabis and guns. Mm -hmm. And we're the first state. So the, and, and so I have asked my guest, <laughs> Wendy Gibson, who is an expert in the field of medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. She has been with the project since 2000. A 2000, as, as we have ventured into making this whole thing legal, she is a nurse that knows all. I, you can't believe. Don't say all. Okay. There's, there's okay, so I much more it. that I don't I, know. I will go I that. Do. Wait, yeah. but I'm a, my experience with Wendy is just learning all of this is just overwhelming. But let's talk about my favorite. What is it? Guns mm -hmm. and medical cannabis. Yeah. That's, that's today. Today, we have a new wrinkle. Why is it that if cannabis, medical cannabis is legal, guns are legal, so why are we here? And what, what, what happened? Yeah, this all kind of, this kerfuffle really <laughs> came to a, a boiling point uh, last week when tw was it, tw 30 patients reported that they had received letters from the Honolulu Police Department uh, informing them that they had 30 days to turn in their guns and ammunition because it is illegal for cannabis patients to own guns or ammunition uh, because the federal laws say that um, anyone who uses cannabis might be prone to mental instability and um, so therefore they cannot own guns and so it's in the law that they cannot. Okay. The question is, mm -hmm. do they do that to alcoholics? They don't do that for psychoactive drugs, which is, has Opiates. been the cause of mass yes. shootings mm -hmm. and 
Yeah, not for opiates no. either. No, much more dangerous drugs. Much more dangerous. Oh. Opiates are killing themselves. Well, Come on. So. That's because of the Controlled Substance Act of 1970, which squarely places cannabis in a Schedule One drug category, those having no medical use whatsoever, and the most dangerous drugs on the planet. So However, getting the state it of, out of that yeah, is, the state has of been Hawaii, the challenge. Hawaii, though, mm -hmm. has declared mm -hmm. that there is a medical use. Yes. So the state recognizes it to a certain degree. And it, but when it comes to conflict with federal laws, that's where our old outdated policies need to be looked at and updated because they're 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 really horrible. Yes, <laughs> horribly outdated. Well, the, uh, the attorney general, Doug Chen, mm -hmm. said he understood all of that, mm -hmm. and he also understood his own personal bias, and mm -hmm. he was going to mm -hmm. put that aside. Okay, he sat right where you are and said mm -hmm. that. Um, and he understood about states' rights. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and so, mm -hmm. for him, mm -hmm. this he wasn't quite sure where to go with this issue. Okay. But he did say mm -hmm. that he understood mm -hmm. states' rights, and he understood his personal bias because he said that he grew up at a time when they taught him that uh, marijuana mm -hmm. was a gateway drug. Mm -hmm. So he never tried it because mm -hmm. his parents told him not sure. to. Sure. We've, we've all been told yes. my, my entire life it's yep. that it's the most highly dangerous thing. It's going to cause severe addiction and brain damage yeah, and um, drop yes. out of school and you'll never have a job. That's, okay, yes. you yeah. know. So, so <laughs> uh, he said he understood yeah. his bias, but, mm -hmm. but he understood also all of these issues. So I thought that was promising when he said, mm -hmm. that, when he admitted yeah. his own bias. I, I'm hopeful that we're looking at some serious change and fairly soon. The police commission is going to be meeting today to address this because in the past this just wasn't an issue for them. They weren't really aware that this was a problem. It's been happening over the years. Patients have been receiving notices, these letters, but it was just more recently there was a change in some wording on the application for the permits which asks, are you using any illegal substances including marijuana? And then they ha clarify that to say that by federal law, no use is legal. So they don't recognize medical use. So that puts our police department in, in kind of a bind. They are trying to enforce state law but they are sort of also being forced to enforce federal law. Well, okay, now, honestly, if you're filling out an application and it mm -hmm. says that, yes, you, you check it to be sure that you're, because mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to be charged with fraud. No, no. you have to answer okay. the question. So you'd answer the question. However, if you already have mm -hmm. a gun mm -hmm. for the last however many years, you've mm -hmm. been hunting with guns and all this kind of stuff, Yeah. That now in the last month you get your cannabis card. Mm -hmm. How is it they know this? That's one thing if you fill out the application and you say, yes, I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. But now I've been hunting with this gun for years. Mm -hmm. Now I get a cannabis card mm -hmm. and I have to turn in my gun? Well, the, the police what? have backed off from that. There's nothing in the law that says they have to confiscate the guns. What they were attempting to do was to try to match up names using the Department of Health database compared to the application forms. That's our understanding of what they were trying to do. And the database? The state allows people to look at the database? Not, not freely. The Department of Health does covet the, private, the privacy of patient information. But there are exclusions for police business. Um, it, it was set up so that police have 24-7 access um, on a need-to-know basis to find out whether or not a patient is valid or not. And the Department of Health comes back with an answer of yes or no, or maybe it's an expired card. But they don't freely give out patient information. And only a few of the law enforcement officers are allowed access to this database. I'm, that still bothers me. 
Yes, that was that, that was probably me. what raised the most alarms is that um, you know not just there's there's this fear of uh, of um, government trying to take away guns, but of law enforcement having complete access That's, to all of the patient registry, yeah. and they they don't, they don't. And mm -hmm. look on the Department of Health's website, and there they came out with a statement I think it was yesterday, mm -hmm. explaining what kind of access is allowed and it's on a need-to-know basis but we we had hoped that it would only be for registry purposes but we we never expected that it would be extended to gun ownership I, I, that bothers me because and now I don't have a a card or a gun mm -hmm. however I do know people that have been hunting forever mm -hmm. wild boar they have guns, mm -hmm. uh, and that bothers me to think that here we they've been hunting some of them for ever, okay. and now there's this issue. It's never and, been and an now, issue and before. And now you're a criminal again, yes. and you're well, you're you're uh, mentally incompetent. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, to handle a gun or ammunition, you or can't even ham am have ammunition. That. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's raising a lot of questions, absolutely, on what needs to be done, which policies need to be fixed, and the police commission will be addressing that today, today. at 2 o'clock. We'll know more tomorrow. Um, it's, it's just one of their agenda items. Yeah. But we're, I'm also hopeful just because we have a new police chief who has looked at this and, and made some go yeah. very good statements. I was going to read her yeah. statement. This is a new area of concern for cities across the country and we in Honolulu want to develop a policy that's legally sound and serves our community. Mm -hmm. HPD Chief Susan Ballard. Yeah. So I believe that she understands that this war on drugs and the whole reefer madness um, you know, era needs to be over, that we need to look at creating sensible drug policies and especially with something like this. It, it, it's based on no science whatsoever. It's based, we don't know what it's, these conclusions were based on anything except reefer madness. Yes, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. And if you pick up a young person on the sidewalk in Waikiki and mm -hmm. he's got an ounce or a quarter of an ounce of marijuana, he goes to jail, he's branded for life, mm -hmm. and yet we have yeah. people like our president who has committed lots of crimes and he gets elected. This, this is just so wrong. Some people So keep... wrong, wrong, mm -hmm. wrong. Any way you look at it. Pri privilege of all different sorts. Yes. Uh, so, I, and, oh, whoa, Sorry. what was that? Sorry. Oh. I dropped something. Oh. Pardon me. Oh, I thought maybe they had come for us. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, your Something statement. <laughs> Watch out. Did well, I say something wrong? But yeah. there, there are many things that we need to do, though, to move forward with this. And one of them is to get cannabis out of a Schedule I drug category. And there is, uh, Congress is working on that. There's a bill, it's H.R. 2020, that would do just that. And there's a huge backing from the um, American Legion who would like to have um, veterans uh, gain access to this medicine for PTSD. Mm -hmm. They would also like to see research being opened up, so they're, they are backing this, um, oh, this bill. We have to take a break, oh. and okay. we will be back in a minute. Sure. Don't go away. <laughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Carol Mon Lee, Think Tech Hawaii's volunteer chief operating officer and occasional host, and this is Minky. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks, Think Tech will run only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness 
and promote civic engagement through free programming. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, www.thanksforthinktech.cosbach.com. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo, and shishya for your generosity. And so if, yeah. Aloha, we're back. And we are talking to my dear friend, Wendy Gibson. She is a cannabis nurse, mm -hmm. educator, mm -hmm. and she works an organizer with the Drug Policy Forum. That's right. And my go-to for all questions, <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> so now tell us exactly my memory is that mm -hmm. when the bill was first passed in Hawaii, 2002 mm -hmm. or 2000, 2000. Mm -hmm. that instead of putting this cannabis issue in the health department, it went to the Department of Public Safety. Public Safety. Mm -hmm. So is it there that they don't want to let go? Is that mm -hmm. where it gives them the authority to do this? Do they feel that I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. You're, what you're asking is, do they still feel like an ownership uh, yes. of it and a need to be monitoring it mm -hmm. very, so very closely? I can't speak for them. Um, possible, but we tra we got it transferred over to the Department of Health because we wanted to maintain better patient confidentiality, yep. and they understand medical issues, so. It, it's the most appropriate department it is, for it, it to be in. Yes. Yeah, and so that's part of why everybody was so aghast that the police department had been given this information, and people wondered how freely they've been given this information. If um, and we still don't know entirely, but our understanding is it was just patients who had filled out permit application forms. Mm -hmm. But I'm hearing now that there is at least one patient who said no, that they did not do that. So Yeah, well, the, the article said they were confiscating. That oh. Oh, So it, I don't know, maybe I misread, but it sounded to me like they were confiscating from people that had already had, like I said, about oh. farmers and guns and mm. people with years and years mm. of ownership. Well, I believe when, uh, occasionally when Law enforcement has been doing compliance checks. I believe if they find guns, they will confiscate them. What do you mean a compliance check? Well, uh, law enforcement has been doing compliance checks and showing up at patients' homes to check to their patient, uh, their plant count, and to check to make sure that they are labeled correctly. And so, if I'm growing, mm -hmm. if I get the mm -hmm. ten plants that mm -hmm. the law allows, yeah and I'm growing it at home, mm -hmm. they can come in and take a look? Is that, is that what you mean by compliance? Well, they're not supposed to just show up. Um, however, we do have reports of that happening on Maui and on the Big Island. I don't believe it's happened on Oahu. And we, we, we need to look into that further to find out more of the details. I don't want to start spreading rumors about, yeah. uh, you know, because I don't have all the details. I, I just imagine that it would be so difficult to mm -hmm. to grow ten plants in a small space. And you on Oahu, most people mm -hmm. have small space. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, well, law enforcement has said that the only reason that they showed up was because they received a complaint of some sort um, about a smell a or smell, yeah, yes. that kind of thing. So yeah. Well, again, <clears throat> the rules of living in condominiums. Mm -hmm. Or no smoking at all, any mm -hmm. kind of smoking. Yeah, patients so, are uh, have a hard time trying to figure out how to do this because yeah, they want to go down and smoke in their car or have to drive somewhere, and you know, I have to tell them no, don't smoke and drive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't smoke in your car. It's just yeah, yeah. There's there's so many rules, but this patient population has less rights than any other patient population already. So we are working. The Drug Policy Forum has been working on giving patients back some of these um, rights and like to keep your job. 
<laughs> would be a nice one. Whatever would be a nice one, have. yes. Mm -hmm. But you can see Hawaii's drug laws. Uh, we do, the Drug Policy Forum has created a, a booklet, and it's for healthcare professionals, for patients, for caregivers, or well, anybody who wants to know Hawaii's laws. And that's on our website at Drug Policy Forum of Hawaii. It's dpfhi.org. And in there, there is um, the question about gun ownership. It's, it's a brief. Mm -hmm. and, but we will try to keep you up to date if you subscribe to our newsletters or you watch the website. We'll try to keep you up to date with what we're discovering about the policies that the police feel that they need to continue to enforce and which ones they want to change. And then also legislation that we're going to be introducing in, during the legislative session to try to get it out of the Schedule One drug category on a state level just for solidifying that we recognize, that the state does recognize a medical use for it. So to get it, this is just the state. Mm -hmm. So we're, do you have a bill before the legislature? Not yet. Okay. Session starts January 17th. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they're already piling up bills. Mm. Yeah. So what can we do mm. as watchers of Cannabis Chronicles? How can we support mm. your bill? What do you want us to do? Well, if they subscribe to our newsletter, we'll send out a list of the bills that we're supporting, a little description of them, and talking points if they want to write letters about it, how to access the state capitol's website so that they can go in and click on buttons that say I support or I do not support. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to keep it easy, but it's, it's really best if people submit their opinions um, in writing and so they need to go to the state capitol's website and create an account in order to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we create a Cannabis Chronicles cadre, <laughs> yeah. um, I talked to Terry Heady oh, mm -hmm. about just the same thing. Uh, we need to come together mm -hmm. so that they understand mm -hmm. this is, and, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not a user Mm -hmm. But I want the right for other people mm -hmm. that the medical, I want that mm -hmm. unencumbered. I want them to, because from all that I've read, all the people that have been on our show, mm -hmm. that it is really a great way to heal to uh, for other ailments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I come from a long line of mm -hmm. been totally active mm -hmm. in, in so many issues. Yeah. This to me is just one of those issues and I want people to have that right. Mm -hmm. If you you feel that this will cure whatever it is, mm -hmm. PTSD, mm -hmm. arthritis, whatever, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We need to have that, you need to be able to do that. Well, I created an educational program to teach other healthcare professionals about how the medicine works about the chemistry of the plant and our own body chemistry and how they work together so that healthcare providers, the doctors, the osteopaths and the APRNs will feel more comfortable in making those recommendations and helping patients use their medicine. Mm -hmm. So we need more education, absolutely. There are also patient support groups that have been forming all over the place and you could attend meetings of those. One of those uh, recently formed, I can't remember the name exactly, but I think it's Hawaii Medical Cannabis Patients or Medi yeah, Cannabis Rights Group, something like that. Well, but, that's, yeah. that's what we but need. If, if you contact me at yeah, the Medical Cannabis Coalition, I'll give you more information. Because but. that's what we need for people to have mm -hmm. the rights. That's yeah. all I want. Yeah is that you, you're comfortable, mm -hmm. you feel free, you feel safe mm -hmm. with doing this. Sure. Something that's 10,000 years old mm -hmm. should not be. Yeah. It's been used medicinally for at least five to 10,000 years. Yeah. And in my 30 years of working in healthcare, I've discovered that this is the safest and, and pretty darn effective medicine for most of the patients who are using it. And it's one of the only medications that doesn't carry the side effect of death alongside with it. 
and so you know i want people to understand yes like any medication it can have side effects but if you understand what those side effects are you can anticipate it you can treat it and the side effects are not in insanity yes like, like our laws like, yes. seem to assume yeah well uh, that's what i want i want Yes, the, the support organizations, or we want to make sure that everybody has the right mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. and, uh, and feel safe. They don't feel like the police That's... are going to come knocking at mm -hmm. the door yeah. or that you're going yeah. to go to jail for mm -hmm. an ounce of cannabis. Yeah. I, that's just so mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. The jails are full. Yeah of young people mm -hmm. with one ounce of yeah. marijuana. And we do want to encourage patients to follow the law mm -hmm. and register um, and not have to choose between registering for a gun and registering for your medicine. Yes. Or have to give up for one, one over, for yeah. the other. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so we want you to contact Wendy, contact me, whichever, both, because we need to make sure that this bill passes mm -hmm. and that people are safe with medical marijuana. I agree. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Marcia Rose. Aloha. Aloha.